Hey all you space cats, you're listening to the Black Hole Podcast, Dead Eddie vs. Corporate America, Episode 8. I'm your favorite underground artist, Mitch Miller, otherwise known as Dead Eddie. It is Friday the 13th, Friday, October 13th, 2023, and for those of you that like the sound of my voice, we're going to talk about how communists have seized power of the United States of America, right? Um, They haven't really seized it. Uh, It's been happening since the 50s that they've ingrained themselves into our nation. And it's a form of communism that I've termed corporate communism. Uh, it's a it's a form of communism that uh, collects wealth for a class of people in this country, uh, corporate executives, uh, ownership of corporations, uh, corporate communism. So I I'm, I myself I'm a free market entrepreneur, right? I uh, I come up with ideas. I've run businesses in what used to be a free market or the semblance of a free market, but we don't really have a free market in this country. And I'll explain how, but the corporate communists, they want you to believe that free market means less regulation, right? They want less regulation, especially at the top, the wealthy people, less regulation for them. To them, that's what they say free market means. I believe the cornerstone of a free market is the free exchange of ideas. So a free market economy has a free exchange of ideas. It has nothing to do with regulation. Um, Now, we used to have a free exchange of ideas when we had a public utility phone service in the United States. M.A. Bell was the phone company, Ma Bell. It was a public utility, delivered home phone service, to the entire nation. And people had a social contract, right? It was the newest technology. You could talk to someone miles away in your home. So there was a social contract. I'm going to I'm going to pay a nominal fee because it's a public utility. I'm going to pay a nominal fee to have this technology in my house. And the exchange is um Anyone can call me at any time. I can unplug the phone. I could just not have this service in my house. But I had a social contract. Hey, I'm, I'm going to get on board with this newest technology. Therefore, I'm going to pay to have this phone in my house. And we even went as far as to say that people that had phones in their house, their names would be published in a public uh, directory. Right, You could pay extra to keep your name out of that directory, but if you paid for a phone service, your name was published for anyone to see. Uh, and again, this was a social contract. Anyone could call you. Anyone pretty much from anywhere in the world could call you in your house. So someone could call from Zimbabwe with the next greatest idea, pitch it to you on the phone just randomly on a Tuesday afternoon and you could say okay let me take down your details that is a really good idea I'm going to call my friends my neighbors see if we can put an investment team together see if we can get a patent for it and help you and then we're going to credit you with uh, coming up with this idea Mr. So-and-so from uh, Zimbabwe that's a free market the free exchange of ideas Now, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, we privatized the phone services, made it private corporations, uh, and that's that's when the corporate communists really started to take effect and take control of the country. They've been operating since the 50s, but uh, they really stepped up their game when they started controlling all the voice services in the country. Then we had the internet. This again was supposed to be the free exchange of ideas, right? The internet, you can freely exchange ideas, but 
because of the structure and because of this corporate communist uh, economy system that we have, um, the in internet is owned by only a few companies. They own the internet. And they own the exchange of ideas. They own all the information. And it's in their best interest to get you to pay to advertise through the internet, right? So their best interest is not freely exchanging your ideas and getting it out to the most amount of people. Their best interest is to seal it off, close it off, limit it so that you pay to get that information out to as many people as possible. You have to pay. That's not free. That's not a free exchange of ideas. So it's not a free market. We do not live in a free market whatsoever in the United States of America. Uh, at the very least, there should be a public utility for voice like we used to have, right? Think of all the people with disabilities that rely on voice communication services that live in this new landscape of private companies controlling all the communication information. There could be people out there trying to get through to government agencies, and we don't, uh, just the scope of that alone should be a reason to, to make it a public utility for people that are disabled like myself that uh, rely on these voice services. But I think the argument here is also that the internet should be a utility, a public utility, and, uh, and, and then we would have a free exchange of ideas and a free market economy, uh, not a corporate communist-controlled economy. Here's another example. Back to our public utility phones, right? Uh, say a farmer gives me 300 bananas, right? This is my 300 banana argument. Farmer gives me 300 bananas, says, do what you can with these. In a free market, I can call... 300 of my neighbors up, I can get in the phone directory, call 300 of my neighbors, say, hey, I got bananas, uh, 90, 99 cents a piece. Uh, you know, would you like to buy one? Uh, come over and pick them up at my house. Um, so I make 300 calls in one day. I hand dial those calls in. They go through. The way it's set up now is if I make 300 calls in one day, I'm going to be tagged as a telemarketer. Even though we have the technology that we could tell if that was auto-dialed in some way or if the person manually dialed those phone numbers in, we don't deploy that technology. We just tag. We, it's a hypothetical, but we, I would probably be tagged as a telemarketer and a spammer and not allowed to make 300 calls the next day. Maybe the next day I can only make 100 calls from my phone line that functions through the Internet because we don't have... Uh, the the separate voice uh, telephone lines anymore. So the second day I can only make 100 calls. Third day maybe I can only make 10 calls until eventually I can only make one call a day because I'm tagged a spammer, a telemarketer, whatever. Right? That's not a free market. I can't sell my, bana my 300 bananas per day and make a decent living because the technology is not owned by the public. It's owned by a few corporate communists. Um, and the corporate communists, they use psychology, the best psychologists, various tools through the media to convince us that we're free and that we live in a free market. And the only way to have an even freer market is to deregulate them, even though they control and own all of the information in this country. It's not a free market. Um and here's the other thing. It's not in these corporate communist interests to deploy world-changing ideas, right? It's in, their, it's in their interest to capture and steal the good ideas that people have. Then instead of developing a world-changing idea, they figure out how to release it in as many generations or iterations to take every last penny from your pocket. That's what these corporate communists do. They do not find a good idea, promote it, and engineer it in a way that it can change the world 
very quickly and make for a better world, they want to figure out how to make the most amount of profit and take every last penny out of your pocket and into the corporate communist bank accounts. And that's why I think I can't get these these projects that I propose funded, right? Um, I won't pander to the corporate communists. I won't say, no, we're going to release this to maximize profit or whatever formula they come up with. And they're good ideas. And, and I'd like to make a fair, reasonable profit from them and function as a free market entrepreneur. But, but I know to counter the communists, I'll probably have to release many of these ideas as a nonprofit. Um, so I've asked for help with these ideas, you know, whether they're a nonprofit or a for-profit, uh, it, you know, projects. Um, and I'm going to just, I'm going to say, if you don't fund these ideas, my ideas, it's probably because deep down you're a corporate communist. These corporate communists, they take lessons from communists around the world, right? Uh, they, they learn from their techniques, from their strategies, and they deploy them here in the United States to establish an elite class of corporate communists that control all the information in the United States. They have no interest in a free market. They are only interested in enriching themselves and staying on top of the, as corporate communists. They share their stocks and their companies with each other, and they deploy strategies to stay in power. And they own the government. They own everything in this country. And there's a few of us out there, these free market entrepreneurs that say, hey, if we, if we get these good ideas, we're not going to play your games. And that's why it's important to fund people like me and uh, other free market entrepreneurs out there. Because there's not many of us left out there. We think we have to play the game. Everybody thinks you have to play the game and, you know, sign the contracts and all that stuff. I don't own any corporate stock. I don't own any stock, and I don't. I'm signed into very few contracts, including point-and-click contracts. That's why I'm neutral, and I may be one of the most neutral people in the world because I'm not signed into contracts, and I don't own any stock. So you may say, "Well, we're not as bad as Russia, right? Or we're not as bad as China, these former communist countries that still have a strong communist pal, uh, party." operating within them we don't do the things they do right right uh and a lot of that is i'm going to put this in perspective there are cases in those countries that are very real about people like me standing up to these communists and things that happen to them um it doesn't happen all the time but Again, you may say, we're not like Russia, we're not like China, but I'm going to tell you a true story. On November 7th, 2010, I was taken from my home. I was thrown in a solitary confinement cell at the Allegheny County Jail. I was forced to take psych drugs while a CIA-funded company systematically drained my business bank account. This all happened in the United States of America, and I'll leave you with this. Does that sound like communism? <laughs>